Sound check, sound check. Chemistry, we're continuing on with our thermal chemistry unit. We're going to learn a principle of how to calculate enthalpies called Hess's Law. So the enthalpy of a chemical reaction is indicated to the right side of the reaction. If the enthalpy is negative, then the reaction released heat. This is an exothermic reaction. If the enthalpy is positive, then the reaction absorbed heat, and this is an endothermic reaction. So if we look at this reaction right here, carbon plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide. So you write the delta H of the, or the enthalpy of the reaction off to the right. And then in this case, the delta H is negative 393.5 kilojoules. So what that means is the creation of carbon dioxide from carbon and oxygen is exothermic and releases 393.5 kilojoules of energy per mole. So Hess's law is a method for calculating the enthalpy of a target reaction using the known enthalpies of other reactions. And there's three fundamental rules that apply that uh, Hess's law uses to do this. So one, when a reaction is reversed, the sign of the enthalpy changes. So if we take the reaction we just looked at, it has an, an enthalpy, a change in enthalpy of 393.5 kilojoules of heat energy coming out of the reaction. So it's exothermic. But if we turn that reaction around, if we wanted to run that reaction in reverse, so there's the same reaction, but it's turned around right side on the left, left side on the right, you change the sign on the enthalpy. So it would require that you put in 393.5 kilojoules of energy to make the reaction run in reverse. And that would be an endothermic reaction. The second rule, when the reaction is multiplied by a factor, by a number, the enthalpy is multiplied by that same factor. So there's our original reaction again. If we then multiplied everything in that reaction by two, then you see that the, uh, the enthalpy over there uh, is also multiplied by two and goes from negative 393.5 kilojoules to negative 787 kilojoules. The final rule is that reactants and products can be added if they're on the same side of the arrow and subtracted if they're on opposite sides of the arrow. So let's take two generic reactions. A plus B produces C plus D and 2B plus D plus 2C produces E. So if we look at that reaction, we see that a and E would appear down on the bottom because there's no other A or E. So the only A we see is on the left side of the first reaction and the only E that we see is on the right side of the second reaction. So A and E would appear in the final equation. Now there is a B on the left side of the first reaction and 2B on the left side of the second reaction so you would add those together to get 3B. There is 2C on the left of the second reaction and 1C on the right of the first reaction. So those two would be subtracted. And the final result of that would go on the left side since it has the bigger of the two. So 2C is bigger than 1C. So you subtract 2C minus 1C, that will give you C. And that goes on the left side of the reaction. And finally, the Ds, there's a 1D on the right side of the first reaction and 1D on the left side 
of the second reaction. So those just cancel each other out. You subtract one from the other, doesn't matter which is which, and they cancel each other out. So there's no D in the final reaction. So those are the three principles that we're going to use for a Hess's Law problem. So determine the enthalpy of the following reaction. So the reaction we want to try to determine the enthalpy of, we don't know it, is this reaction that's called the target reaction. And that's ethane, uh, which is C2H6, plus 7 half O2, produces 2 CO2, plus 3 H2O. Now one thing you'll notice about that reaction that's a little odd is that the coefficient in front of O2 is a fraction. There's only one situation in chemistry where you're allowed to have fractional coefficients, and I'm going to talk about that in the next lesson. But we'll leave it for right now that that's going to be the coefficient for O2. So now what we do is we have three reactions below. The first one is carbon plus oxygen gives you CO2, and that has an enthalpy of reaction of negative 393.5 kilojoules. Then we have H2 plus one half O2 gives us H2O. And that has an enthalpy of reaction of negative 285.8 kilojoules, meaning it releases 285.8 kilojoules of energy when that reaction takes place. That's exothermic. And finally, we have two carbons plus three H2s gives us C2H6. And that is, um, gives us an enthalpy of negative 190.6. So all of these reactions are exothermic. So what we can do is use the three principles of Hess's law on these three equations to derive the target equation. We're going to create the target equation out of these three equations. And in doing so, we're going to have to make changes to the enthalpies over there on the right. We're going to have to multiply them, add them, what have you. And what that will do is give us, at the end of the problem, the final enthalpy of the target equation that we're trying to find. We're trying to find the enthalpy of that target equation. Okay, so the strategy for doing a Hess's Law problem is you try to find something that's in the target equation, one of the compounds or molecules there in the target equation, that appears down only once in, in the equations down below, in equations 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so look for something that appears only once in all three of those equations. And the first thing we'll, we'll notice is that in equation 1a, we see that we have carbon dioxide on the right side of equation 1a. Now we see that we also have carbon dioxide. By the way, that's the only place you see carbon dioxide in any of the three equations. You also see that you have carbon dioxide on the right side of the target equation. But the difference is, in the target equation, the carbon dioxide has a coefficient of 2, whereas the carbon dioxide in equation 1 only has a coefficient of 1. So in order to make those match, you're going to multiply equation 1, everything in equation 1, by 2. And so down below we write equation 1a. It just means it's related to equation 1, but we've made a change. And you'll notice that everything in equation 1a is identical to equation uh, 1, except it's multiplied by 2. So we have 2c plus 2o2 produces 2co2. And that means you also must multiply the, the enthalpy by 2. So negative 393.5 times 2 gives you negative 787 kilojoules. Okay, so we've taken care of equation 1. Now let's try to find something else that appears in the equations down below and uh, only once and appears in the target. Well, we notice that we have H2O in the target equation. We have three moles of H2O over on the right side of the target equation, 3H2O. We have H2O in equation 2. It's the only place that H2O appears in any of the three equations. But there's only one mole in equation 2. So we're going to multiply equation 2 by 3, everything. So now down in equation 2A, down below, you see 3H2 plus 3 times 1 half is 3 halves O2 and that's going to produce 3H2O. That means you have to multiply the enthalpy of the reaction by 3. So 3 times negative 285.8, that's in equation 2, 3 times negative 285.8 will give you negative 857.4 kilojoules. Okay, now we'll go on to the final equation 3. 
Okay, and you don't necessarily do them in order of equations one, two, three. You're just looking around for things that appear in the target that you see only once in the equations that you're going to manipulate to get the target. So we're picking out things we see only once. And what we also notice is that uh, C2H6 appears in the target, and it appears only in equation three down below. So we're going to take a look at that. So the C2H6 is on the left side of the target equation, and the C2H6 is on the right side of equation three. So they're both one moles, so we don't need to change the number of moles. They both have one mole of each, but they're on opposite sides. So what we're going to do is take equation three and reverse it. We're going to put the C2H6 over on the left, put everything that's on the left over on the right of equation three. And since we reverse the equation, we change the sign on the enthalpy. So the negative 190.6 kilojoules in equation three becomes positive 190.6 kilojoules. Okay, so we're done manipulating the equations. Now the last step is to use rule three of Hess's law, which is to add and subtract um, the equations 1a, 2a, and 3a, and confirm that you actually did end up with the target equation. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. So we see that we have 2c on the left side of equation 1a, and we have 2c on the right side of equation 3a. So those two will uh, subtract each other. It doesn't matter which subtracts which. You can basically just think of them canceling each other. And so the two C's are gone. Next, we have 3H2 on the left side of equation 2A and 3H2 on the right side of equation 3A. So those two will subtract from one another or cancel each other out. And they're both gone. They're not going to appear in the final equation. Now we look around for anything else. And what we see is we don't see anything on opposite sides that will subtract, but we notice what is left over that doesn't uh, get added or subtracted. 2CO2, 3H2O, 2CO2 on the right side of equation 1A and 3H2O on the right side of 2A. So those are going to be in the final equation. And the one mole of C2H6 on the left side of equation 3A is going to be in the final equation. The only thing we have are those is the 2O2 and the three halves O2. So you have to do a little fraction math here. So two is equivalent to four halves, right? Two equals four over two. So I'm gonna just put a common denominator under that two and make it four over two. So four over two plus three over two because they're both on the same side of the arrow. They're on the left side. Four over two plus three over two equals seven over two. So we're gonna end up with seven over two O2. So those will be in our final equation. So you look up at the target, you have one C2H6, that's what we have down below. You have seven halves O2, that's what we have up in the target. You have two CO2, again, look up at the target, that's in the target. And you have three H2O, that's up in the target. So our equations when added together, 1A, 2A, and 3A match up with our target equation. That just confirms that we've done everything correctly. We've actually gotten the target equation from the three equations below. So now you add up the enthalpies, negative 787 plus negative 857.4 plus positive 190.6. And when you add those up, there you see them over on the right in a box. When you add those up, you get the delta H of reaction of negative 1,454 kilojoules. Okay, so that's what Hess's law does. It allows you to calculate the unknown enthalpy of a reaction by taking other reactions with known enthalpies and recreating them. And it's kind of the algebra of chemical equations. And it's used in, in a number of applications you would, uh, you would do in this class and in AP chemistry and in college chemistry. All right, so that takes care of this lesson. And uh, we'll have one more lesson in the subject of thermochemistry before we're done with that.